Hey guys, I just wanted to talk to you guys about my VStrom modifications. Everybody loves modifications, right? So let me take you around my bike and show you exactly what I've done. My recent upgrade, of course, is my fork seals. You can see the old ones right here, they were leaking. And this was mainly from my cross-country trip. The left one started leaking, so I upgraded to all balls. And then I upgraded my fork steering bearings to all balls as well. And that was a good mod. It's very smooth now. And here we go. Here's my nice Vishram. You can tell right here I have my Denali lights. And I got these from a friend of mine. He removed them from his bike, but they look cool. Except uh, I'm having some issues with the electrical. So they're not really working very well. And I did buy the bar for the lights, so I'm not sure where I got it. I think I got it from like Dual Star or something like that. But that's a pretty good modification to put the, the lights, and it looks pretty cool. I think um, having the bike with the two little lights on the side works really well. I have a Shinko up front. One of the things I really like about this particular setup is this Magstad windscreen. And the Magstad is excellent because you can adjust it as you're riding. Even the new VSROMs, like the VSROM 1000, you couldn't adjust it while you're riding. You had to go to the front and move something and move it. This one, you just undo these two bolts right here on each side. And voila, you can move it up and down. I like this, um, this adjustable windscreen, it's not complex. There are some electronic windscreen bikes out there, but it just adds so much more complexity. I just don't see the point of it. And right now it's at the highest point. I installed a center stand. This has been one of the best things I could po possibly have done because I did change my fork seals before and I had to strap the bike up to the ceiling in order to hold it. With this thing, you just put it on and that's that. This is, I believe, Dual Star, the brand. It's really excellent and it's, I think, only 130 bucks. It was very inexpensive for what you got. In the back, I have my E20s or E10s or E20s. They're, I guess, 20 liters, and they're thin enough for you to get around, especially if you like lane splitting, if you live in California, you want to carry your lunch, your tools, or whatever. That's a pretty inexpensive Givy bags. They're the Givy E20s. They're top loading, so you can cram a lot of stuff in there. I have taken these cross country and it works pretty well. I do, I used to have like very large E45s, 45 liters. The problem is they were so wide that when you went around and you try to filter, you could hit cars. So I prefer having some like thinner saddlebags, but these are not built very well, but you get what you pay for, of course. And have and they go all around over here. And it, in a way, it kind of acts as a, um, a crash bar. And I put a box here, and it's opened, because I lost the cover when I was doing some maintenance, so I'm going to have to like search for it. And this is basically a PVC pipe that a friend of mine gave to me to carry tools. And because you have so much space in between here, right in this space, that you could use this for storage and it kind of mimics the exhaust a little bit so I think it looks nice and it's very out of the way I carry all my dirty tools in there and that's it's just strapped in with a bunch of zip ties and clamps and on top here I have my Givy top rack I don't have it right now I don't like how the top cases look on bikes so I have it off for now I do have it right here and that's a, a pretty large one I like that I can put my laptop or whatever there and it'll be easy to transport another thing I've done I really like these shorty levers and you can get these 
you know, they um, started mass producing these, so these are so cheap to get. You can get them just everywhere. I paid $15 for it. A friend of mine dropped my bike. I let him borrow it, and he dropped it. So it was a good excuse to get some cool levers. And right here, I have my GPS mount. I would like to figure out a way to not mount this here, but that's a good place to put it. I would rather have it up there. I just don't want the vibration, but also... This mount kind of gets in the way of the key a little bit, and I don't like that. I also have grip heaters. The button fell off. This is from Cycle Gear, so the quality is never that good there, but it's cheap. And the good thing about those is that the heater grips are just the, the rubber assembly and everything, and you don't have to get the elements, put it under your existing grips. It just comes all together. So it was a very easy fix. Um, my complaint is that the button, you can see it here, fell off, broke off. So I have to remove my gloves in order to, to use it. But other than that, it works really well. I also have a USB charging thing here. So if I want to like charge a phone or charge cameras, that's the way. Of course, my most controversial mod is a car tire on my motorcycle. I'm not going to go too much into it, but, you know, if it's not for everybody. It works for me. I got um, 16,000 miles on that tire, <laughs> and it's still almost new. So, And up front, I have a Shinko 705, and I think that was maybe 50 bucks, but um, I think I have maybe 8,000 miles on it. And it still looks good, except there's some mild cupping. Well, that is my v 650. This particular example is at 63,000 miles. It's a freaking great bike. And not a lot of people are into these bikes because they're not the newest and greatest bikes. But you can get these really cheap, used especially in the winter in this area. And I keep it garage most of the time. And... It's taken me across the United States twice, so I've done a lot of miles on it. I bought it with 10,000 miles, and I've just been putting on tons of miles on it. I really like it. Uh, that's my bike. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.